I first got started in uh, coaching out of pure frustration. Um, I set up my own training business when I was 30. And for about five years, we were, we were really successful. We were doing great, doing day-long seminars. We were teaching all sorts of business skills, sales skills. And um, the problem was that I knew it was just kind of me too stuff. There was nothing unique about it. There was no um, value above what was available from lots of other people. It, we were good. We were very good at it. We were committed. We had high quality standards. But, you know, it was just all right. And um, it was just bugging the hell out of me. So I started looking around and doing my research and looking for an edge. This is before I'd started to do any significant research into sales and behavior and all that stuff. This is what got me started. And um, I came across somebody who recommended that I would start looking at something called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And um, I started looking into that. Now, there's, there's two distinct schools of NLP. I won't bore you with this, just a few seconds worth. Um, there's one branch uh, sort of run by, fronted by Dr. Richard Bandler, and there's another um, side fronted by Dr. John Grinder. And normally people go with one side or one uh, sort of angle approach or the other. Um, me being me, no, no. I dived in and I did all the qualifications with both of them in the shortest possible time um, because that's just kind of me obsessive nutcase. So that experience with NLP led me into cognitive and behavioural therapy and all sorts of uh, behavioural psychology and all sorts of other stuff. But one of the most important things that came out of it was that in order to get good at the skills I was learning, I had to be coached and it frustrated the hell out of me I'll be honest not simply because I'm an arrogant ass though I am an arrogant ass what frustrated me was that I realized that um, coaching and performance coaching are two very different things coaching counseling tend to be this this is very broad brush bear with me tend to be looking at the past to help you process the present whereas performance coaching which is what I wanted to be involved in looks at the present and how you use that to create the future that you're looking for so I got really frustrated with this and that's how I got involved in starting my own coaching practice because I wanted to help people with their futures instead of just helping them process their pasts. So that got me going. And then the next realization was that, well, actually I'm gonna have to have some other resources for this because once you start down the process of coaching, it's a bit like whack-a-mole, if you, if you ever played that or seen it, um, where you whack the mole, you whack the problem and then the next one pops up. So unless you've planned a specific process, unless you have a curriculum, unless you've got some structure, you're left handling each problem as it comes up. Let, let me give you an example. Let's say that you help somebody with their new business development. Well, that's great. Yay, new business. Lots of it's flooding in through the doors. They've, they've got a five-step marketing plan going on. They're cold calling. They've got incoming leads. It's brilliant. But there's a problem because the problem now is they've got to have a system in place to handle all of those job orders. And when all those job orders are coming in, the next problem is you've got to have a system in place to qualify them and to make sure that you're only dealing with the, the best quality ones. And then you've got the issue of making sure that you're getting the right prices and it goes on and on and on. But the thing is, and this is something that took me a long while to work out but eventually I got there is that most of those whack-a-mole sequences are actually predictable so that was my kind of journey through coaching I went from being coached and learning to deal with my past which wasn't really fun for anybody um, through to developing my own system and my own coaching model to take the stuff I'd learned from NLP and cognitive behavioral therapy and behavioral psychology and cognitive, all sorts of stuff. And to put that into structures so that I could help recruiters 
go through the, the processes from where they are to where they want to be. And um, that's my kind of journey and process through it. And um, the more I did it, um, what I found was that the, the more I did performance coaching, the quicker it became, the quicker I was able to help people get the results they were looking for. Not just because I got better at it, I probably did, but not just that. The key thing was that the amount of experience I've got, the amount of coaching that I'd done for the number of people I'd done it for, and, and I mean, I've, I've, I've trained, not coach, but I've trained over 50,000 recruiters. So at a certain point, you kind of built up a, a, a background of expertise. You, you'd kind of know what's going to come and you kind of know three steps, four steps, eight steps, I suppose like a, like a chess player or, or a go player. You know what's coming a few moves ahead. So you're able to help people get to where they need to be quicker, faster, more easily. And that's kind of where I got to and where I've been then striving to get to for, for a number of years in terms of helping people through coaching. So I don't just want to help people handle historical stuff and whatever's gone on in their lives. I don't just want to help people with where they are. My primary focus is helping people get to where they want to be as quickly, easily and predictably as possible. And that means that it's not just about asking questions, reflecting back the answers, having a phone call, well, oh, well, you said you were going to do this. What have you done? Okay, how did that go? What roadblocks were in the way? That's lovely. Well, what are you focusing on this week? What are you trying to get out of it? How will you know if you've achieved it? Oh, that's lovely. Well, let's speak next week then, which is what a lot of coaching is about. Performance coaching is not like that. Performance coaching is about having a process. It's about identifying where somebody is, getting very crystal clear, clinically clear about where they want to go to, and helping them take the shortest, most effective route from A to B, or A to whichever letter of the alphabet you choose to work on, but actually helping people take them through a process, a curriculum, a system, a plan, not just a series of, without being disrespectful to anybody, nice fluffy conversations where you do the same kind of thing every week and you kind of get the same kind of results every week and after a little while you kind of go, what the hell am I paying for this for? What performance coaching should deliver for you is results. It should do it predictably and it should do it in a way that's structured. And in most cases, a good performance coach should be able to tell you what the process is from the very first session onwards. Hope we get the chance to work together at some point. You'll see exactly what I mean.